Crop Talk on Market Journal is supported by Nebraska's soybean farmers and their checkoff. Well, building demand for corn through ethanol production certainly helps farmers. The state of Nebraska has been part of a study over the past two years with the Environmental Protection Agency utilizing E30 biofuels in 50 state-owned vehicles. That study is to see if higher blends of fuel would perform well with conventional vehicles without any mechanical issues. E30 is not currently approved for use outside of flex fuel vehicles. Results of this phase one testing were positive, so the state of Nebraska expanded that test to now 825 state vehicles. You can read all about this unique study in the December issue of the Nebraska Farmer. Next is another edition of our Crop Talk segment. We're joined once again by Nebraska Extension plant pathologist Tamar Jackson Zim to discuss how northern corn leaf blight can impact your corn crop. Tamara, today we want to talk about northern corn leaf blight. What can you share about its status in Nebraska? Well, northern corn leaf blight is a disease that I think we saw a little more widespread this year across the state. And, and intermittently, you know, we've seen it uh, before in the state, especially in northern Nebraska. But I think we saw it a little bit more widespread this year. And so this uh, disease is caused by a fungus. It does overwinter like most of our pathogens do. And so if you've had it in your fields, you're likely to see it again. And if you're not sure, this, this is one that causes those large cigar-shaped lesions. They have rounded ends on them. And it's a fungus that prefers cooler conditions in the 60s and 70s. So sometimes we see it develop earlier in the season. And then again, it'll flare up often toward the end of the season. And you can see it anywhere in the, in the crop canopy. And once you have a lot of those lesions, it can, t it can cover a lot of leaf area pretty fast, look pretty alarming. Talk more about what its characteristics look like. You mentioned long cigar shape, right? Yeah. So, you know, the first time you see it, maybe they're only an inch or two long, but eventually, you know, those will continue to expand across that leaf. And they can be, you know, a foot or more long. But what usually happens is you get several develop on a leaf. And if the weather is still really humid and you've got a lot of spores being produced, you can see in the very center of those cigar-shaped lesions, it looks dirty and dark. Uh, and under a microscope, it looks like a forest of spores on that surface, and that's what's being splashed and blown around uh, to new areas, but will overwinter too, so you're gonna see it again. So that was one thing I think uh, to watch for. You can confuse it with some other diseases too, like Goss's will, those big lesions. What's always uh, the question, is there anything management-wise you can do to prevent that, is there? Well, there is, and, and there's good resistant hybrids to northern corn leaf blight. There's also uh, fungicides, and so those are things to consider, and we've got efficacy data on which products work the best, not only on northern corn leaf blight, the, but the other fungal diseases as well. Well, when you come into uh, the Market Journal set, Tamara, we always learn about new things out there that producers should be watching for. And I think it goes to show just the importance of scouting your fields during, during the growing season. Is there a particular suggestion on how often a producer should be doing that, or what are your thoughts there? <laughs> well, that's tough. You know, that's uh, definitely something I think is important is let's get out and take a look, because often at the end of the season, we get a lot of questions from people with concerns saying, my f if my fields didn't yield like they should have, but I bet we might have been able to find it during the season and maybe been able to help then. The autopsies, we call them at the end of the season, are really difficult, and then it's usually too late. But, uh, you know, depending on the conditions, there's always a pathogen that will take advantage of it, some of them liking warm or hot weather, some preferring the cooler weather. But in general, moisture is what favors most of these pathogens. And so you're at higher risk just having irrigation and especially pivot irrigation because it keeps the canopy, the leaves inside, inside that field wetter. And so for most diseases that we watch, it's usually mid to late summer. And so uh, I think the things at higher risk, you know, you'll start seeing bacterial leaf streak early on, like around June or so. But often if you're, uh, if you're out there starting around tasseling and after that, maybe late July, is when you often see a flare up of gray leaf spot when we have higher humidity, because that fungus needs a lot of moisture. And so from then on to the end of the season, uh, we, we are usually watching for rust. And we can give you some warning on where rust is, because that one does not overwinter, blows in every year from the south. And we watch in the southern states where that disease is, and it helps us anticipate when or if it's gonna move into Nebraska. And we've got tools to help with that. So, 
if they watch Crop Watch and Twitter and the Crop Protection Network, I think it'll help them get a better handle on those. A lot of challenges out there, but as you're pointing out, there's a lot of resources too available for the producers. Tamara, appreciate your time today. Thank you so much.